Hey, greetings, family. Hey, this is Hal from uh, Living Can up up here in, uh, in Seattle, Washington. And uh, I'm joining you guys today, man, to just share a little uh, technique with you guys. And I'm creating this channel to uh, share some of the processes, sort of how I'm finding them up here in the, in the Northwest. Um, of course, just like uh, as we adapt the processes from Korea to work here, you can adapt the processes I'm doing here to work where you're at. Mostly it'll be just as it was taught by Master Cho. It might just be a few different things we'll do along the way. Um, maybe just the plants that we have, I have access to might be different than what you might see from uh, people in Hawaii or other parts of the world, uh, Korea. Um, uh, maybe from making IMO3, what I've found by, uh, by from, from a recommendation from Chris Trump is using oats. So when I get around to that process, that's what I'll be demonstrating. Um, today what I'm going to do is a fermented seawater. Um, technique. Um, it's sort of a recipe that um, I saw one time and now I can't really actually find it printed again but I'm just sort of doing it the way that, that you know that I've been guided to this point from what I remember from reading and uh, I can tell you it works really good. Seawater is an amazing thing. Um, it's got a, a huge range of minerals in it and one of the number one things in it is magnesium. So you know, I always hear all the ganja farmers always like, oh, cow mag this and cow mag that. Well, if you're just giving a little fermented seawater and some water-soluble calcium extract, um, you'd have a great source of this cow mag. <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> it's cracking me up. But um, the reason why I chose the name Living KNF is because really, to me, Korean natural farming is a living system. Yeah, because... It's, it's really sort of a, it starts with like almost like a thought process of, you know, Master Cho talks a lot about um, us loving our animals, loving our land and our plants, almost like above ourselves, yeah, putting ourselves into like service to them. And then what happens, that creates a cycle where then they start returning that love to us. And then we're just totally full. So when we sort of like put these other sort of elements of our life, our reality, um, sort of above us and really nourish them, love them, then uh, it, it creates a vibe where that just starts coming back to us and then we just start feeling really fulfilled. And uh, it, it's really, it's a life work and it becomes, it becomes part of the way we live. It's a living system. It's, it's constantly evolving. People are coming up with ways to tweak processes or new processes or new things we discover um, along the way from scientists and stuff and how to apply things such as they've discovered how lactic acid bacteria can dissolve chitin, you know, and that's a practice uh, that I've been you know, um, doing and uh, I'm running low on one of them, uh, so I'll be doing that again in the future. I'm basically just going to be um, documenting things as I do them for myself throughout the garden, focusing a lot on cannabis and in containers, um, although I'm going to have a greenhouse going, I'll be putting up soon, be documenting some of that, and uh, also have a page on Facebook where I'm pretty active and sharing. And there's also a good Korean natural farming page I help moderate there. So we're uh, and have a great poultry page also if you're into chickens, which I think that honestly, like if, if if it's possible, if you can incorporate animals into your gardening, it's it's really awesome. I mean, I really think of like Korean natural farming is is like like a almost like a part of the DNA spiral of of, of permaculture, like I, I permaculture and uh, Henry and natural farming are, are both like part of that same spiral, yeah? You know, because they, they, they both do the same sort of things in a lot of ways. We just, the Korean natural farming just has some different practices, but a lot of the mentality is the same, you know? Reusing things, incorporating systems that all connect together. And, and this, is a, this is a crucial element of uh, any kind of regenerative practices for farming, right? So anyway, so this is just basically, it's sort of similar to a lab's um, you could just use straight seawater. Um, if you wanted to put the labs, you could put one to 100 labs, and that would be fine. Yeah? Um, yeah, so we'll just get to that. So a little hot water I'm going to use just to activate this, uh, this oats. Oats are really quick and easy to, to release their uh, starch. We just need, like, something, anything, any kind of carbohydrate source, you know, to capture the and feed the microorganisms. 
Um, you know, you'll find different, you whatever different grain or whatever thing you use. I mean, you could use wild seeds you went and collected and dried, man, from plants or whatever. You know, you could, um, I think it would work with about any kind of seed because I get this stuff on them. And, and the more rough a seed is, the more you'd have to agitate. So I got a little filter here and a little funnel just because so, I don't want to get really the particles in there. That might create some undesired effect. That chickens will get to eat this now. It's actually some old oatmeal got donated to me for my chicken, so so yeah. So now we got our milky water here, right? Now I'm going to add just a touch. This is some nettle FPJ. I'm going to add about four or five millimeters of that. I got it sort of measured out in this. I sort of know where it is, so just measure that out. It's about five milliliters. You know. Somewhere around a teaspoon or so, with a generous teaspoon, if you're in that mindset. And then uh, our seawater. Ah. And you don't have to worry about the 70% the thing because this is not going to expand at all. But I will try and leave it down where it's as wide as it is. I won't, I'll leave that little bit of head space so it's just got as much air space as possible. But this won't expand or do anything funny. And it, it really will have just as, good, as much interaction the way I'm going to do it just like that. So, um, yeah, and one last little thing. We're just going to put a breathable. I'd like just a little piece of uh, cloth and a rubber band. Yeah? Just on there like that, and now I'll go set this someplace that's about 70, 75 degrees. It's in my bedroom, and if you guys want to check it out, this one I could have done it this morning, but I'm going to get you to see. You'll see, you know, if you ever do the Jadam liquid, um, the Jadam, JMF, the Jadam microbial solution, JMS, um, you know, they, they talk about the bubbles, and it forms a layer of bubbles on the top. And when it starts to break from the edge, that's when it's starting to go into decline. That's exactly the moment to use it. If you could catch it right when it's breaking from the edge. And it actually broke from the edge a couple hours ago. But I don't know if you, how well you guys can see that. But you can see there's bubbles. And there's actually sort of like a clear zone to the edge. It's hard to make it out maybe on the camera, but I can definitely see like a ring of more like bubbly activity to the middle. And earlier it, it, uh, it was totally covered. Like this morning it was all bubbled all over. And then it broke and started coming away from the sides. That's the perfect moment. And if you smell it, it reminds me actually, it reminds me the smell of bread, man. It, it smells sort of bready. You know, like a fermenting bread. It's not quite as sour as like a super sourdough bread. It's not quite as pungent as what lab smells like. It's a really good sort of like just fermenty, bready kind of smell. And you know when it's smelling like that, it's on, man. I mean, I took actually a little sip of this this morning, and it, and it tastes sort of good. Even though it's just ocean water, but it, I feel it's been fermented, man. It's all right, man. Let's check it out, man. It was actually pretty tasty, man. I could see it making it with, um, some, you know, high-quality salt, like Redmond salt. Um, for human consumption, this might actually be like the next uh, probiotic beverage, man. <laughs> you know, then that's the wonder of Korean natural farming, that we can consume our inputs, man. And if you're not tasting your inputs, then you're doing it wrong, man. Let me tell you, you need to be able to taste them and consume them for the most part. You know, maybe skipping the IMO series. But I have eaten, I have tasted my IMO too before. And uh, that's an interesting experience. It's sort of like forced floor candy, you know. Anyway, all right, blessings to you guys, man. Love, huh? The Korean natural farming. Love from the crown, man, to all of you, man. All right? Good one. Hey, I, uh, I also wanted to add for you guys, uh, you know, when we're, when we're going to use this, um, you could use the same dilution rate as the seawater, which would be 1 to 30. But I found that, you know, especially in containers, that, that maybe is not the best idea. It might be a little intense. Form. It's a pretty strong solution, I think. I feel like, especially if you add a few more things to it when you're offering it. So maybe like a 1 to 100 might be appropriate, or 1 to 50, or somewhere in there, you know, just sort of feel it out. The larger container you're in, 
the um, stronger sort of you can go a little bit. And we shouldn't really look at these solutions necessarily a lot of um, as something that we're um, always giving in the soil either. Actually, I, I think there's we should focus a little more on foliar applications of Korean natural farming inputs. And another thing I found, especially um, if outside, if I'm so when I'm irrigating inside with my Korean natural farming solutions, I go really weak. I go about half of the recommended dose or a third the recommended dose. But then I'm irrigating with it. I'm watering with it, you know, and I do that like three or four times a week, right? Maybe even sometimes I go like 25% the recommended dose even. Like I sort of found, I, I don't know, maybe it's just my crazy personality. I like to give it, and this is working for me. Might be better off if I could just cut myself back to once a week or something, twice a week, you know, and go a little stronger. I don't know, but. I sort of feel like sort of nibbling is nice, you know, in a healthy human, um, you know, maybe just nibbles throughout the day. And, uh, and that's a good way of health instead of eating big meals. So maybe that's where my thinking has come from on this. But it's been working for me, and I, and I encourage you guys to just figure out what works for you, man. You know, practice makes perfect. And this is one of those things, like, it, it's a living system. It's living Korean natural farming. And nobody can give you a recipe for success for your, uh, your situation, the recipe for success for you is you getting into your situation and practicing and finding, finding that, you know, because even different cultivars, you know, you could give you, I could give you, oh yeah, this is what I do to, to grow my herb, but even for me, like I have some strains that don't react well to, to, the, to the same thing that another one is just going crazy on growing inches a day, another one might be like, ah, fuck, you know, so, you know, you see what I'm saying. We have to um, we have to practice to find our way. All right, bless up, man. Yeah, ta.